Imagine your house has 100 rooms and you invited 10 guests. After dinner, six of them go home, but the rest demand to stay with you because they believe you have enough space. This is what's happening in Canada in a nutshell. Despite the fact I run an immigration company, sometimes I have to tell immigrants you cannot stay in Canada. If your status is expiring, but there's no legal way to remain in the country or apply for permanent residency, unfortunately, you have to leave the country. This is the law, but some people disagree with it, and that undermines the reputation of good, law-abiding immigrants. Here's a line chart showing the total number of immigrants, including international students, entering Canada each year from 2013 to 2023. Now, overlaid, you see the growth of international students' admissions. You may think this is a huge number. However, what that many people have seen is this analysis, which shows how Canada's visa refusal rate compares to other countries. Canada's study permit is the most refused student visa in the world. So yes, the government is doing its best to regulate the enormous demand. But honestly, this number of newcomers is the reason why Canada dodged a big recession around this time. But many people in Canada aren't happy about this influx. What many people haven't realized yet is, we do not have ICE in Canada. Let me explain the problem with mass deportation. When a person decides they want to move to Canada legally, I'm going to Canada. Like many international students do, they need to apply through IRCC, Immigration Refugees Citizenship Canada. After getting approved, they cross the border into Canada They're going over the border to Canada. And the CBSA or Canada Border Services Agency issues them a permit. They're good to stay in Canada until the expiry date of the document. Imagine you have to install Wi-Fi, so you call Bell. They get you to sign the contract virtually and then send a technician to your place to set up the company's Wi-Fi router. In this metaphor, IRCC is the call center and the technician is CBSA. But what happens if you cancel your contract, stop paying, but refuse to return the router? Well, Bell can't forcefully take it. Oh crap. The problem with deportation is similar. The US has ICE, but Canada doesn't have an equivalent agency dedicated to deportations only. Instead, CBSA could do IDRDR. First, investigation. If someone breaks immigration rules, CBSA looks into it. Second, decision. If the CBSA decides the person shouldn't stay in Canada, they issue a removal order. Third, removal order in some cases. Fourth, detention. If the person is considered a risk, or their identity is unclear, they might be held in detention. The last one, removal. If there are no legal challenges, the CBSA arranges for the person to leave Canada. Now let's compare their operational capabilities. ICE has over 20,000 employees, while CBSA just 14,000. Yes, you may argue that Canada has a several times smaller immigrant population. But don't forget that CBSA performs many duties. Deportation is one of them. The question we face is, can immigrants stay in Canada forever? We may see a lot of them leave in the next year or so if their status expires and they can find a pathway to apply for PR in Canada. But some, similarly to the US, will stay despite their status. The only real mechanism the government has to counteract this is to lower the intake. That's exactly what we have seen with the student cap and the low-wage temporary workers. We are tightening the rules and restricting eligibility to reduce the number of low-wage temporary foreign workers in Canada. Decreasing the immigration levels is the most effective tool the government has, as our biggest benefit is, unlike the US, we don't take in illegal immigrants, but some become illegal inside the country. As the world of immigration is challenging, a tool I always recommend for immigrants to use is called PR Indicator. It's free and it checks if your job is in demand like the healthcare or construction sectors. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, as I'm sure we'll have a very interesting conversation down there. Like this video and share it if you found it interesting. I'll see you next week.